Progesterone, produced to help balance estrogen and to stabilize the uterus, etc. Pregnancy dominates in the second two weeks of the menstrual cycle. Now, low blood sugar, caused by overactive pancreas, or a toxic liver causes a lack of sugar to the brain. These conditions can cause emotional symptoms similar to those experienced during PMS and menopause. So it's possible that blood sugar issues may also um, be causing some of the symptoms that a person has with menopause. And blood sugar is a hormonal um, cycle. Now hormones including estrogen are fed to livestock to increase their growth and improve the meat's tenderness. The hormones in the meat when eaten are passed on to the consumer. This is why it's important. There, there are a lot of external hormone mimickers in the environment. A lot of toxins that mimic hormones and they can cause reactions in the body as well. So that's one example of hormones that are found in meats. Thus, proper nutrition is vital for any solution to a woman's health problems. This includes not only avoiding animal foods that contain estrogen, but also supplementing the diet with calcium and magnesium, vitamin E, vitamin C, B6, and essential fatty acids. Of course, if, if someone is anticipating getting pregnant, um, it's very important for months in advance to get sufficient amounts of E12 in the diet because that helps to prevent neural tube defects. And the brain, is, brain and the spinal cord are rather important organs in the body. Would you not all agree? So some people do have a, a genetic predisposition to not metabolize B12 properly. So there's a precursor form it's necessary for some people to, to take in order to have sufficient amounts of uh, B12 and its effects in the body. <clears throat> Cow's milk also has high levels of biologically available hormones and growth factors and other chemical contaminants from highly medicated cows fed in environmental waste. So these are things that you would like to also avoid. What is the precursors uh, for your body to metabolize? I, I don't metabolize B vitamins. B vitamins or yeah, B12 so or B vitamins? Well, well, I'm not certain about the specifics, but I don't think it's not like B vitamins. So I'm, I'm figuring B12 is the same. So I was just wondering what the precursor is for you to metabolize. Because so, so many people, there's, a, I think it's maybe 25% of the population has a gen, genetic um, polymorphism, which means there's different ways that we metabolize things. And 25% of the population has that, so they don't utilize B12 very well. So, and because that precursor is part of, part of the breakdown of progesterone in the body, and is necessary to metabolize it properly. If you look on this next page, I've got a very simple chart here. <laughs>
The one in the middle is what we often like. I didn't mark it, but this is with a little green on here because it's the good. And then the one above that is the bad, and the one below that is the ugly. So you got the good, bad, and the ugly met metabolic pop, uh, pathways for metabolism of estrogen. In order to metabolize it well into a non-toxic form, the one at the bottom there, the 4-hydroxyestrone and 4-methoxyestrone, the estrones at that level are um, byproducts of like premarin, horse, horse, uh, horse hormones, mm -hmm. and these have high carcinogenic potential. Metabolizing this way has carcinogenic potential. So we want as much as possible to drive the metabolism of estrogen through the 2-hydroxyestrone and the 2-methoxyestrone pathway. And B12 is required for that. So if you're deficient and your body doesn't produce, doesn't break down B12 properly, getting the intermediary in there will assist you in reducing the carcinogenic potential of estrogen metabolism. And, and what is the intermediary? The intermediary here is is 5-MTHF. Is that something you should take with you? Is 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. If you have, it's possible to do a genetic test that will tell you whether you have a polymorphism for this. But it's kind of expensive. I just think it's better just to take the, the 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate instead. I mean, it's, you know, you might as well put it in your body. It's not going to hurt you. So for some people, that's very important to take that. In addition to having sufficient amounts of magnesium, um, there are other other things like rosemary, kudzu, soy, indole-3 carbonoid flax that are also listed here in this initial arrow at the good. Just after you see here, going straight after. There are extra things. There, there is one um, product that we have that includes all those things for to help reduce the chance of developing cancer based on mismetabolization of estrogen. Anyway, estrogen is a very important hormone. Rosemary, rosemary is one of those, but but um, there are certain extracts of it that work better than just straight rosemary. Another factor that is involved in hormones and menopause is stress. It's very harmful when one cannot adapt to it, and it can cause a malfunction of a person's organ system. Of course, organ system controls all the glands and hormones. However, stress is often ignored in the treatment of these particular problems. Kidneys and adrenal glands play a vital role in many bodily functions. For example, they help regulate blood sugar levels, produce sex hormones, and directly affect your energy and metabolism. These slides are really stupid, sorry. Some of the common symptoms of PMS, well, maybe you've had PMS, so you know. Symptoms are headaches, backaches, cramps, joint pain. And we do have this list in your lecture notes, so you don't have to write them down. Increased sugar or chocolate cravings. I must have PMS. <laughs> Some of the common symptoms of menopause are headaches, back pain, hot flashes, mood swings, night sweats, poor libido, irregular bleeding, vaginal dryness, and trouble sleeping. So you can see there's some parallels between them. Some of the common symptoms of low blood sugar are headaches, fatigue, muscle pain, trouble sleeping, night sweats, and irritability. So in order to address hormone issues, we have to look at all those things, not just hormones. We have to look at blood sugar as well. So we do have a PMS menopause health survey, which I would like you to fill out at this time. It's going to help us better understand what's going on with you. It's in your notes here, and I do have some entertainment on these ones. You can also fill it out, don't you? But you can call it andropause health survey. So in the top section, please check off any of the following symptoms you've experienced in the past six months. So if you've had headaches,